You see on the news every now and again where someone comes across an odd alien looking creature from the depths below. Creatures that have barely seen light and live in a strange deep sea lifestyle. Beneath the sunlit surface, these fish are rarely seen, but in recent years we have traversed the deepest depths of the ocean to discover some of the ocean's most bizarre and monstrous creatures. Today we're going on a whistle stop tour of some of the most weirdest ones of all. So uh, buckle in folks, it's going to be a deep dive today. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and today we're going to start with probably the most common deep sea animal of all. The lanternfish. These little guys are basically the cannon fodder of the deep ocean. Small schools of fish that account for about 65% of all deep sea biomass. In all but one species of their animal, they have a number of light producing organs with luminous patches at the base of their fins, resulting in blue, green or yellow faint lights. I can imagine that if you're in the ocean and you see this, it's going to be a pretty spectacular thing to see all these multicoloured lights under the water. Or if you're a predator, it's basically going to be a Sunday lunch all you can eat. This is the deep sea anglerfish, one of the strangest looking deep sea fish there is, with a long dorsal spine that supports a light producing organ known as a photophore. Through a chemical process known as bioluminescence, this photophore can produce a blue or green light similar to that of a firefly on land. Yes, for anybody that's seen Finding Nemo, you know exactly what this thing is. Basically, this is a law in which to catch smaller unsuspecting fish, and when they come over, they will be uh, devoured by the jaws of this thing, which um, is terrifying to think about. The ugly face and bloated body has given this fish the apt name, the common black devil, due to its ghastly appearance ranging from dark brown, grey or black colours. Its skin is specifically adapted to reflect blue lights. Since nearly all light emitted from bioluminescent creatures is blue, the anglerfish can be nearly invisible to other sea animals. So basically the anglerfish can just sit there motionless in the water, wait for an unsuspecting fish to come up, and then it will be the anglerfish's next snack. I really do feel kind of sorry for those lanternfish now. <laughs> those guys don't have it easy. So yeah, how about these strange guys? These are called gulper eels, otherwise known as pelican eels. Aptly named due to the absolutely huge mouths they have that they can basically snap open and shut in order to eat prey much, much bigger than them. You think this thing is unassuming when swimming along? Well, think again, buddy. The lower jaw is hinged at the base of the head, with no body mass behind it, making the head looking disproportionately large. Its jaw is so large, in fact, that it's estimated to be about a quarter of the total length of the eel itself. The difference in these hunters, however, is that they don't wait around for their prey to come to them, and they use their big stretchy old gob to expand and stretch themselves out in order to catch prey. Therefore, with the eel being slim and nimble, this makes them a great hunter. Due to the fact that these fish live so far down, it's actually quite rare to see one, and they are sometimes caught within large fishing nets. Whilst we don't know a lot about them, what we do know from their observations is that these fish are incredibly aggressive. So uh, there's a little bit of a tidbit for you right there. This is the sort of fish you find that just makes you think it's an alien. I mean, it's so bizarre compared to much of what else is in the ocean. Normal ocean fish are weird enough themselves, so this really does take the cake. So, moving on from one strange animal to another, I'm going to take you to a place where you probably didn't expect that this was actually a deep sea animal. This is the giant tube worm. Ugh, I'm not a fan of this one. It just gives me the heebie-jeebies for the noodly worm appendages. Ugh. No, 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 no. The giant tube worm was completely unknown to science until researchers exploring the deep sea Pacific Ocean floor discovered these strange hypothermal vents. When the water emerges from the vent, it is rich in chemicals and minerals. This toxic soup of chemicals would be lethal to most animals, so scientists were shocked to find out that entire ecosystems of animals actually lived in these vents. The temperature in the water was near boiling, but somehow few animals have adapted to survive in such extreme conditions such as the giant tube worms. Given the fact that no light gets down there, 
They survive living purely off the bacteria and the chemicals in the water. Due to the fact that they have no mouth or any digestive tract, the bacteria is what we presume keeps these things fed and alive. This symbiotic, mutually beneficial relationship is key to the survival of the giant tube worm, growing up to 8 feet long in some instances. Whilst they seem relatively harmless, they... You know what, let's just move on. <laughs> I'm really not a fan of these things. So uh, let's look at something a bit more... fishy. Less worm-like, and probably even less pretty, is this. This is the giant isopod. Related to the small pill bugs that you see, these things are actually subject to a strange phenomenon called deep sea gigantism. Yes, this is an actual thing. Animals living deep in the water tend to grow larger than those in shallow waters, such as the giant squid for example, just to add to the terrifying mix of deep sea creatures that we've got today. The exact reason isn't quite known, but scientists think that it may be a natural evolution to cope with the pressures of the deep sea. This thing is so big it can grow up to 16 inches long, about as tall as a bowling pin, so that's pretty big. And as you might imagine, as well as being really big, the isopod has managed to get itself its own bag of tricks in order to survive, including being able to roll up into a ball to protect itself, and being able to traverse the ocean floor with ease. This is helped by the isopod's awareness and sensitivity to its surroundings. They pretty much spend all day skimming the ocean floor for scraps and anything else they can scavenge, chilling and living a life on the ocean floor. So yes, that is a whole host of incredibly odd animals today, and if you liked it, I might do some more, so let me know if you do. And uh, just to answer any questions you might have out there, nope, I do not want to go and make a video in person because some of these things look awful, and I would rather keep my feet firmly planted on the ground. Thank you very much. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.